white plays queen f3 and this is a leap forward to 2013. Carlsen has won the candidates and is now ahead in his match with Anand. This endgame is one of my personal favorites because I saw it live and it really helps you to understand rook endgames a lot better. Black played queen c7. Magnus is playing black. I should have said that before. King h1. Queen e7. Queen g4. And in the first part of the ending we see Anand playing white being tied down to his weak double pawns. I would like to invite you to find a plan for black here. So at this point pause the video and try to find a sensible plan. So pause. Well the only thing you can basically do in these kinds of positions where there's not a lot to do is slowly improve the worst pieces. And that's here like the kingside pawns and the king. So the plan is to slowly improve them whilst not uh, letting, not allowing the white to get any counter chances. So he starts out with king h7, queen f4, g6, king h2, king g7, S some slight improvements, white doesn't have anything to do, queen f3, rook e6, and after a lot of waiting moves, uh, Anand decides to exchange to another endgame, although there was no way to proceed in this endgame, because the kingside pawns, even after some improvement, they won't get any further. And if uh, if white would just have patiently waited like this, in this position, there would there would have been nothing going on. However, he still wanted to force matters and played queen g3. So that that's also uh, a trait of of Magnus's style. He just he just waits for opponents who cannot do nothing anymore. So passive defense is is one of the parts uh, humans are that don't like it. So th this psychological trait he's, he's using against his opponents. Uh, Queen g3 uh, sacrifices a pawn and leads to a drawn endgame. But it's with a pawn down. Rook takes e4. Queen takes d6, rook takes e3, queen takes e7, rook takes e7. Well, one famous quote of Tarash is that all rook, rook endgames are drawn. I would like to add all rook endgames are drawn except when you play Carlson a pawn down. Rook d5, rook b7. It, it should be easy to draw. I mean, the, the active white rook compensates for the pawn. However, things are just not so simple. Rook d6 preventing the black king from entering the game. f6 making these really slow improvements. h4, king f7, h5. Strong, this is a strong move. Uh, it's splitting the kingside pawns, uh, making them less effective. And in a lot of end games with f and h pawns, uh, that there's no win, so this is a good decision by Anand. G takes h5, rook d5, king g6, king g3, rook b6, just waiting, slowly improving. Rook c5, f5, king h4, rook e6, rook takes b5, rook e4 check. Now he's trying to get somewhere, as you can see. King h3, king g5, rook b8. Carlsen keeps on finding the only moves to make prog progress in this endgame. And he somehow manages to clear, uh, to steer clear from obvious draws. And that's, that's his power. h4, rook g8 check. This is a mistake. 
Instead of this, Anand should have allowed uh, Black to win a pawn on the queen side and exchange all the pawns there with b3. Because after after that exchange, Black will will be left with a double h pawn and an f pawn and eventually it will be an f and h pawn rook ending which is drawn but i can imagine that anand wasn't waiting for these kinds of end games because black can try for a long time and it's not it's not a lot of fun it takes it takes some energy and it's okay it's, it's more fun to try than to draw because you have to be alert all the time so in a match this this is not a good thing to be keeping King h5, rook f8, rook f4, rook c8, rook g4, rook f8, rook g3, check, king h2, king g5, rook g8, check, king f4, and now Magnus is coming through with the king, and he's actually going to force the f pawn to become a passed pawn which is quite dangerous rook c8 king e3 rook takes c4 f4 and now after f uh, after h3 the f pawn will be passed and it will be very dangerous rook a4 in an end game with a passed f pawn it's important for the defending side to have uh, checks from the side and one of the most beautiful things about this game is that these checks are not there because white has these two extra pawns blocking the checks so the the pawns on the white pawns are actually helping the black side h3 g takes h3 rook g6 c4 f3 rook a3 check King e2, b4, f2. He did clear the second and third rank from the pawns, but he also needed to clear the fourth rank because the fourth rank is still quite important to stay. Rook a2, check. King f3. Rook a3, check. King f4. And due to the shelter on this fourth rank, white cannot chase the king down to f5, which was needed for a draw. Rook a8, rook g1, and Anand resigned. What we saw here is, is Magnus's trademark. He, he just creates something out of nothing. This is inspired by a deep understanding of human chess, as I've said before. Humans are worse at playing with weaknesses. The weakness here was playing with the double pawns. And humans are also a little bit bad playing with material down. We saw in the first part that Anand lost his patience, so he traded off to an endgame with pawn down, and then he sacrificed another pawn. However, Carson still finds this way to play on. Anand fails to find counterplay in time and, and loses in the end. Note, by the way, that Magnus has a n had a, a nice space advantage uh, here, and humans also tend to perform badly against space advantages. Well, this was the endgame part. I see you in the next block.